Hello, folks. Brandon Chapman with you today. It's another video for Monday, July, what, 17th, uh, 2023. Uh, titled today's session, Financials Pop as S&P Test Highs and Earnings Are Ramping. Uh, we're just getting into that earnings season. Um, on Friday, companies like, for example, J.P. Morgan, uh, Chase kicked things off. Uh, blowout quarter, and yeah, look how it was received, right? We had a nice run pre-earnings-wise, probably priced in a lot of the potential strength, and we led to this kind of indecision-type day where we open higher, close lower. But today, look at the key. We're close or looking to close above. We still got about two hours left in trading. We're looking to close above yesterday's high, and this places us in a very key position. What trajectory is the market going to take are we looking at continuing to blow off and run higher? Are we looking at potentially going sideways in the coming weeks or possibly seeing some sort of retracement that might provide more help, more of a healthy low for the market or bottom for the market to rally off of? For example, last week on, or sorry, last uh, week and a half ago on the 6th of July, it was a 90% day, intraday. Nine, over 90% of stocks were declining and over 90% of volume it provided a pretty nice kind of capitulation point, and we saw a continued rally in the market. And a lot of the names we've been talking about for the last few weeks, like, for example, Mara, um, which blew through the target there at 18 last week before pulling back and today trading lower. Uh, Coinbase had a huge breakout last week, Riot. And you could go down the line, Rivian, uh, RIVN, um, had a breakout the week before. Uh, companies like Fisker, um, again, huge breakout last week, pulled back. Now we're up today. Um, even as companies like Nikola, right? So these companies we looked at a couple weeks ago uh, where we might see short squeezes. Well, it looks like we got the short squeeze. So the question is what's left to drive the market higher at this point. And it really comes down to what seven companies, right? The big names. And you see companies like Nvidia today experiencing bullish activity and it's up, you know, about 1%, as you see, technology trading 1% higher, higher than the market generally. But the leaders over here on the what now, sorry, in the S&P 100 are Wells Fargo, AIG, JP Morgan, MetLife, right? So a lot of these financial companies are leading the way in the S&P 500, uh, currently uh, leading uh, as a sect on a sector basis, financials are leading technology. And we're about to get a full complement this week of bank earnings to help provide a total picture. Frequently, you'll have the market move one way, and then it'll move the opposite way, and we'll see things settle out as we start to get the big names, your Apples, your Microsofts, and others kicking off. If we look here for Apple, uh, the first week of August, um, if you look at Amazon, Amazon's out here a little bit uh, about on the 27th of, of July. Uh, Microsoft. So again, we've got another week or two before some of these big cap tech names start to kick in. But right now we're just trying to feel out what's going on at the banking sector, what's happening to loan loss reserves, what's happening with net interest income, net interest margins. These are all things we want to hear. And clearly, I mean, JP Morgan was the uh, a huge benefactor of what happened with the regional banks, first trust, et cetera, really adding to their bottom line. But again, some signs that maybe we're starting to see some concern over, over credit losses, therefore loan loss reserves escalating and other things. And so we'll see how things play out. But right now we're seeing financials lead. But look at the bottom of the list, utilities and real estate. And this creates kind of an interesting juxtaposition. What is happening with treasury yields? Uh, treasury yields declined sharply last week. Uh, we're at lows, kind of a flight to safety but mostly to do with inflation. Inflation was lower than expected last week, still above the Fed's uh, kind of target range, but some elite pressure kind of you know, alleviated because inflation is not as hot as previously expected and may be coming in, but it will kind of reach a baseline. Maybe it's around that 2% or slightly above 2%, the Fed's target level. But it certainly brought off, took off some of the pressure of the Fed having to raise more. Still expected to raise next week, a quarter point, but again, taking some of the pressure off. Now, is this a near-term phenomenon? Are we really poised to see the market really start to decline? If we bring up the SPY, I'm going to load the expected move study here. Um, this is for one standard deviation, right, of movement based upon 
the pri prior Friday's implied volatility. Notice here we traded over one over two times the expected move for the week in the S&P. That was a very very significant move, similar to we saw back on the 30th, similar to we saw back on the 15th, and again, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, these two dates right here, both produced small corrections in the price, three to five percent. So the question is, we saw the same kind of uh, 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 point happen last week. Are we going to experience a similar type pullback? Three, five, 10, or 20%? 20% obviously the bear market, five to 10% being a more of a significant correction. And it's just a small retracement would be on that kind of 3% range. And again, looking at the last couple here, certainly that three to 5% pullback seems reasonable. But what's going to lead the way? I mean, companies like NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA continued to kind of toe the hill trade well beyond what was expected, but it reached a very extreme point last week, similar to what we saw back on the 16th that produced somewhat of a pullback. Similarly, we saw back on the 25th that produced some sideways price action. But how long can we continue to go with seeing very short pullbacks or just sideways movement and that being all we get? Well, eventually we're going to experience something bigger in terms of a negative pullback. And we look at the volatility markets here, the three-month, the one-month VIX. We're going to bring up a ratio of the two just to see what, what's pricing in right now. On Friday, we did have a level where the three-month VIX was 20% higher than the VIX. What does that indicate? It indicates the market's pricing in some higher volatility down the road. We had that back, for example, on the 2nd of June, uh, on the 19th of, of, of April, uh, the 28th of April, and then again on the 5th of May, and uh, the 10th of May. So we've had several of these readings without any sort of material pullback. Now, circling back to treasuries, are we going to experience more of a pullback and a flight to quality and lower yields and higher prices in treasuries? Well, if we're looking at this dynamic today, it would suggest the opposite, that maybe we start to see a flattening out maybe of price action but ultimately, seeing that the trend your treasury yield starts to normalize relative to, let's say, the three month T bill that's around five and a quarter percent right now, that's already priced in mostly uh, next, most of next week's expected rate increase. Do we start to see the 10 year converge closer to the IRX as basically we're saying, look, the Fed is going to be impotent for the rest of the year? They're not going to cut rates, they're not going to raise rates, they're just going to sit in the middle. And maybe the 10 year starts to come around to the notion the Fed is going to rate, keep interest rates higher for longer. And we start to see 10 year treasuries go up. We start to see the curve become less inverted. What's the impact of that on the S&P? It does help financials and it hurts utilities if long term treasury yields rise in that climate. And generally, it's going to stagnate some of the potential move in the market. So everything comes down to the handful of names that are going to announce in the next couple of weeks. But we're going to get through the next few days of financial earnings to help point the direction of where the market may be headed. So we're going to continue to see what happens here. The other major banks and regional banks that are more focused on lending start to see their names called. And we look at KRE here. Do we fail at the resistance? Do we see a pullback here? So I realize I'm saying asking a lot of rhetorical questions. But again, it's a wait and see kind of market. Because if we look at SKU, it does tell us that, look, SKU ticked on, up on Friday at 150. There is real concern of a material pullback. Whether we get it or not is another question. Okay, It would certainly be healthy. It would certainly create more opportunity. Rather than having to ride the wave of the short covering in stocks like UPST, uh, this continues to come up on my list. Bullish activity today of 14%. I mean, how long can these kinds of short squeeze rallies continue? And this is one where I'm going to kind of, you know, I've been bullish on these for the last few weeks. And, and again, I'm starting to pull back and say, look, be careful, right? Look to take profits. One of the most, one of the most overlooked things with traders is knowing when to take profits in good trades. You'd hate to own it at 50, or sorry, own it at 25, doubles in price, and then it's back at 10 again. With many of these companies, that's exactly where they're likely going. Right? Is Nikola a great company in a good financial position with good sales, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, look at the earnings. These are non gap earnings. Uh, the history is not kind for Nikola, right? What about Rivian? 
You know, just reading an article today about what it takes to fix one of these suckers, right? I know a couple of people that got them, waited two years to finally get a delivery, and they didn't quite get what they wanted, paying over 100000 Kind of interesting. Why, why would you do that? They're pretty cool cars. I get it. But the reality is, is it worth 25 Or is it worth 12 Or is it worth less than 10 The reality is it may likely trade less than 10 And so you've got to be prepared. So if you've been on this tip for the last couple of weeks, now's the time to consider looking at taking profits, right? Um, and then looking for a possible re-entry when that short squeeze starts to pick back up again. Now, there's not a shortage of companies today uh, that are that are not that are looking for the continuation. Uh, Coinbase today, uh, a Ju- uh, sorry, a July 112 bot. Again, what does this give us? It gives us kind of a level. We start to break through. Could we see another push? Yeah, we could. Okay, is that the odds on bet? No. Right? We've certainly exhausted this massive move we made from over a double since the lows in June. Yeah, I've been kind of on the riot and Mara since back here before uh, before the breakout. Um, again, how much more can we see? We finally started to see some bearish activity on Thursday coming to Mara. Is this the eventual top? You know, it's, it's hard to know, right? We just don't know. And so the point is you got to have a plan for taking profits. And these are targets that, that I've set on these coming off the breakouts. And this is where looking to take profits becomes a priority, not knowing what the market holds. So we're stretched. We're out there to ATR moving the S&P. We could readily see more of a pullback in the next week or two. And then we'll look for a better opportunity to jump back in some of these names. Now, there is some some decent amount of uh, bullish trade activity kind of popping up today. Uh, one is Zoom, right? So Zoom, this one hasn't exactly broken out yet, right? We've been consolidating for a while. We're finally seeing today a little bit above average volume breaking through the pr- prior highs on Zoom. On Zoom, uh, it was a 21 July 73 strikes. So we're now kind of above that level. Um, again, this is, if we can kind of finish here next, you know, 15, last 15 minutes or so, the expectation is could go to 80. And again, this is not the money strike. It's not out of the money, but we're finally starting to see a little bit of a break would be reasonable to expect zoom to test prior highs. And the, the kind of a litmus test here is, well, what's the skew look like? Well, if you notice rising volatility, it does create an opportunity to set up a long vertical, long call vertical, buying the lower strike, selling the higher strike, just pick which whatever you want. Uh, again, as the higher you get, to, closer you get to 80, the lower the probability, the lower cost and higher return potential. So again, it's kind of up to you where you want to position this. You can certainly position it closer to the current price at a higher cost. Is would provide there's a little bit of um, uh, there's a little bit of uh, um, uh, benefit to this because of the skew. You could even give yourself a little bit more time. You're still seeing positive skew, rising volatility on these out of the money strikes. It still allows you to create an upside call spread. You're just kind of resigned to going $5 wide, 75 and 80, which isn't terrible, right? You got a month for it to get there. So again, there are companies like this that are a little bit subdued that may have a chance to break that weren't exactly leading the market higher, but may have a a chance to kind of break from a lower point, a little better reward to risk. Uh, BlackBerry is in a similar position, testing our lows against prior highs, Both these companies have high short interest. We've kind of staged a breakout in the earnings. We came back around. We tested the same level. We're back here again. As a trigger, you might look at uh, the high here at about 505. But if we can kind of trade through that, the expectation would be to go to about 560, maybe higher, right? Test the prior high at about 574. Now, if you're trying to get in early, anticipate the move. Well, today we saw December 6th, not a huge gamma a creator because it's out there a ways, but it points to a potential target here. Again, you could decide, again, the rising vol structure, 32 days out, you could buy a five and sell a six. There's a little bit of premium out here because the vol's higher. Again, you could construct a very uh, decent, maybe cost 15 cents on a dollar wide, 85 cent upside, break even 515 in the next month, right? So again, if we get any breakup into this area, it provides an opportunity to close it out, decent reward to us trade. And again, we have that kind of a, a money flow coming in uh, with the option activity today. Um, now, again, if the market's going to go higher, who's it going to rely on, right? Historically, it's been semiconductors. NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA's, we saw that kind of blow off on Friday, faded back. We're sticking today. 
Where do we go? We could draw lines for the low and high from on Friday and say, okay, here we go. Here's our range, right? Do we break above the high? Do we trade to the low and experience a pullback? Very significant move. Well outside the expected move last week, representative of the market overall. And NVIDIA, this is an August expiration that was put on here, right? Um, so we're talking 32 days out in time. And it is a, a, a 550, 600. So it's way the heck out here, right? Somebody's just putting out saying, look, let's say things get crazy in the next 30 days. The market doesn't see the correction. Maybe it's a short pullback. It goes sideways and then breaks to the upside. That's in essence what this is playing and hoping that NVIDIA outperforms the S&P 500. But buying the 550 and selling the 600, yeah, it costs you about 240 on what? A $50 spread. And again, 550 seems pie in the sky, but guess what? The last move from support here back at 400 to about 477, this would be a similar uh, type move, maybe a little bit smaller over a 38 day period of time. So again, the reward to risk is there. Just be willing to risk it all, right? Because you may lose everything here and the skew is favorable. You're buying the 48 and selling the 51. So if you're looking for some speculative trades out there, maybe you've got some shorts on, maybe you're selling some calls on the SP on the S and P like the MES or ES, and you're taking that money and buying some uh, spreads. That's something we call a catapult here um, at, uh, at Theo trade. We have an entire class on it. Don has a 24 week mastermind. He's doing right now called the inner circle uh, that also, I think gets you to the, to our live event coming up in uh, just North in Miami. I forget the name of the city now, um, in November. Again, great opportunity to learn how to sell premium, catapult those or those re premiums you're receiving and buying these kinds of spreads just in case things get a little crazy. Okay? And this creates the opportunity that's out there to catapult or leverage your premium selling to benefit if the market does go higher on select opportunities. Again, AMD saw the sell-off here, tried to break out on Friday, holding on today. Can we trade through the high back here? It was at 117.66, and we're trading right at it right now. We start to take this out. Expect this could readily reach 130 in the coming days, maybe a week or so. And we're seeing today is a 25 AUG, 115 strikes. So slightly in the money here, right? But it's ind indicative of money flow coming in Coinbase as well. I think we looked at Coinbase already, but a Coinbase, again, a July 112. So again, what trajectory does the market tech take? Does it get more extreme? That's probably the less likely scenario. Do we go sideways and see, see uh, uh, um, interest rates kind of normalize a little bit going into the Fed uh, statement next week? Or do we actually see what's probably the most healthy scenario, seeing some sort of pullback here? And again, you can start to create trades that help kind of navigate these waters. And certainly the catapult spread gives you an opportunity either to sell premium and call it take downward side shots or upside shots, but you're doing it from a kind of a premium neutral scenario. So you're not, if the market does nothing, um, you, you probably don't, you, know, you probably don't lose anything. You're selling out of the money calls, for example, on the, on the MS way out of the maybe 4,900, right? So there's lots of opportunity there to kind of create or construct trades, but you don't need the market exactly moving your direction, right? But if some of them hit, it can be very, very positive for a portfolio. Now, looking at Newmon, right, what's going to happen with gold? If, if the scenario of the market goes higher, the dollar's probably going to go lower. And guess what? Gold's probably going to go higher. Um, if the dollar doesn't go anywhere, gold, gold doesn't go anywhere. If the dollar strengthens, or sorry, strengthens, gold's going to go down. So what you're seeing today is there's trade kind of taking a stance on what direction gold's going to go. Newmont broke out. We may have a chance of retesting our lows at around 43.50 or the low of the gap day about 44 and we'll see what this produces. Today, it was bearish activity on Newmont and AUG40, going back and kind of expecting it to test lows. That's the dollar strength scenario. Dollar strengthens, gold goes lower, Newmont goes lower. But what if the dollar weakens? Well, let's look at BVN. Uh, Buena Ventura, ADR, precious metals, right? Broke out, similar to Newmont. Testing support, moving higher today. Is it possible that during a, during a dollar weakness, this is what? This is a San Isidro. <laughs> Try to find that one on the map. But this is a 
Las uh, begonias. Uh, I got a lot of begonias. Those big ones in my backyard. I love them. Uh, San Isidro. So anyway, we've got a foreign company, uh, foreign currency. And again, what happens if the dollar weakens? What happens to emerging market currencies? Well, I like to look at the Aussie slash US dollar, right? Breakout here for the Aussie against the dollar. Do we stage another breakout? That may likely favor a lot of emerging market currencies relative to the dollar. And that means their stocks should outperform. And again, so we have Newmont. What you're looking here is what? Colorado company, right? And then you've got BVN, which is a San Isidro company. Okay, so again, emerging markets versus domestic. Dollar strength would favor Newmont. Dollar weakness favors BVN. And what do we see here? Someone's placing a bearish trade on Newmont. Bullish trade on BVN. Now, the only problem with BVN, though, is that, you know, the, the depth here is not great. Okay, this might be more of a stock trade, right? But 17000 AUG18 at the $8 strike price. So this is massive, massive volume coming in today. Sorry. Um, at 88 times the average. And uh, I'm not sure what I have in here. So, yeah. You can see here one tranche, one print for 2,200 contracts. All this filled. This is all basically all one trader, right? Spreading it around a little bit, various quantities, but in total, equaling a really, really large amount, betting on what? Gold going higher and specifically emerging market gold companies outperforming and depending on what the market cap is, whether it's to qualify as a junior gold miner like a GDXJ. But again, it's certainly kind of interesting, right? Does GDXJ break out relative to GDX? Okay, both look pretty similar in this respect. Um, finally, I'll just I'll show Bank of the Ozarks here. So this kind of wraps up our earnings trend here. This uh, does have earnings coming up on 720. This is one of the companies that had issues. In fact, uh, we were on it <laughs> on on March 1st. Or was that? March 1st. It was it March 2nd? Yeah, it was March 2nd. Right there in the break on a Bank of the Ozarks. Okay, this whole move, right? We had Angela, but we're kind of on top of it. On, with the uh, with the uh, uh, um, with using unusual option activity on the bearish turn in KRE, so let me just let me confirm the date there. Let's go back here, right? Yeah, so it was right, right there. No, sorry, seventh. That was the seventh, right there. Third, yeah, it was the first, second. Yeah, so it was the second. Flip from bullish to bearish, and then also we get this big washout in KRE. Bank of the Ozarks was one of those poster children of that, right? So. We've had a nice run. We've retested the high from June 7th. And again, there's some interest coming in today. Buying the 39, selling the 37, expecting earnings is going to be negative. This is for uh, a July expiration. So for this week, uh, pricing in right here, right? So again, buying the 39, selling the 37, expectors come out negative. And again, I don't really like that necessarily, just playing that kind of move. But uh, you can look at butterflies, a little bit lower risk. But the notion here is that, look, I mean, these companies could present a problem if we see not only liquidity concerns, but we start to see solvency issues, right? We start to see um, issues regarding defaults on credit and that sort of thing. So that's the thing to watch for this week. Default, credit loan, loan loss reserves, credit losses, provisions, net interest income, net interest margin. And what's going to happen as the yield curves, we start to approach the Fed meeting next week. All right, folks, that's all we got for today. Hope you have a great